So we're heading into an age of context where we're going to wear wearable computers, whether it's the Google Glass or the Apple Watch or a Samsung Watch or something coming out soon. Uh, and you're going to want to know things about the world you're in. Now, that works great outside where you have GPS, but inside, like in a mall or an airport or something like that, the GPS doesn't work all that accurately. So there's all sorts of new companies who are coming out that let us do this indoor positioning. And Meridian is one of them. I, I, I'm really happy to uh, have them as one of my first interviews with this Google Glass on because we're going to talk about this new world and what the innovation is going to be needed to make it all work. Who are you? Jeff Hardison, uh, Vice President of Meridian, and I love location-based services. Fell in love with the space about seven years ago, before it was where it is today. And I was over in Australia working with Amazon Web Services, doing some developer relations, and met some people who were doing some early uh, kind of location-based services. You'd walk around the town and learn more about the world around you. And now I get to work for a company doing that. Now it's really cool. I, yeah. When you get these Google Glasses, you, you realize how early a day it is because it. You know, when I got to a casino in, in uh, Vegas, I started thinking about, oh, could I ask, ask for, uh, show me the sushi restaurant nearby, or uh, tell me where the power outlets, where are the bathrooms? <laughs> tell me. Yeah. It doesn't know any of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping to see companies like yours uh, evolve to give me data, give these glasses data so that I can ask those kinds of questions in the future. Is that where it's all going? That's exactly where it's going. So what we do is we have a enterprise software platform that basically taps into whatever data you can provide or type of device you have. So we would love to be working with Google Glass. Uh, today we work mainly with you know smartphones yep. and, and tablets, um, but that's because that's what people are using today. And then we just get the data from the location. Uh, it could be from the device, and then we tap in all kinds of databases to provide the context that you really want. Yeah. So what is it that you guys do and what, why do I need you and, and not Google you know because Google has these great maps outside they drive cars down the street and they they know pretty much everything I want to know about outside the building why do I need this inside a casino or a mall or an airport something like that and what is it that Meridian does so we we personally love Google Maps outdoors we use it all the time and What's interesting about Google Maps indoors is that they're going into the venues themselves and they're saying, hey, With venues. a little ball to take a picture. I saw a guy at one of the conferences that was doing it and it has, you know, there, there's various devices that take the pictures and, and sort of let them map the indoor. We did it at Rackspace, right? Yeah. You can actually walk around our headquarters because somebody walked through with one of these devices. Exactly. And so Google's actually helping get people interested in the space because they go in and they say, we'll take your maps, then we'll put them in our own Google Maps app. And what the venue say was, well, you know, I'm Macy's. I want my app to have maps. And Google says, well, that's not what our maps are for. So we'll actually hear from companies like, you know, Macy's or from the Venetian Casino, and they'll come to us after they work with Google Maps to say, we want a similar experience, but we want it in our app with our colors, our brand, our products, et cetera. Well, that's... That you know, that's one of the things I expect to do with these glasses is walk in a Bloomingdale's or a Macy's or something and say, hey, where's, show me where the men's jeans are. Because the, the Bloomingdale's in New York is like, I don't know, five stories tall. And yeah. figuring out where things are is really difficult if you don't shop there very often, right? right? Um, so you, that's the first thing, you, the first impulse is, where is, the, where is the thing I need to get, right? Exactly. And there's no answer. There's no answer on my phone either. And how do you guys help? a Bloomingdale's or a retailer like that provide that answer, I guess. Yeah, so what we do is we provide this enterprise software platform where... You might poke through it and show yeah, sort of... Yeah, what are we looking at there? What, what's on the so, screen? So what we see right here is this is a map of the Venetian Casino, yep. and they give us their CAD drawings, they upload those into the map, and then our system will scrub out all of the kind of unnecessary architectural information and then mix it into a vector graphic. So you can pinch and zoom the map like you like to do with Google Maps Outdoors. And then they can drop in little pins to represent points of interest. So this is a restaurant, or this might be a bathroom. And then our system quickly calculates the shortest turn-by-turn -turn directions to wherever you want to go. Oh, right? Very cool. So you, do you put, this is actually a place where people can walk? Because 
casino is pretty confusing. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't quite look like this when you're uh, at, at two in the morning walking through it. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. There's a lot of noise and a lot of, they, they really don't make it easy to walk around these things because they want you to sit down and start gambling. Right? Exactly. Um, do you actually uh, go around with a ball or something like that or a traffic flow meter to study how people move through these kinds of indoor spaces? Or? So one of the things we wanted this to be was really scalable. Yeah. We wanted to be able to roll it out to lots of venues really quickly. And Google goes in manually and walks around what we do is we just simply allow the customer to have a license to this software and yeah. then they upload their own maps and then we convert them. We don't even have to ever visit the venue. Okay. We like to, but we don't have to. Yeah. So it will upload them and then our system will, there's an algorithm that will calculate the shortest path and then they can draw a little path that you're allowed to walk. And what's great is that with maps, you know, say that Google Maps maps your place in January. Well, if you're a retailer, that's going to change in March. Yeah. You're going to have to go back to Google and say, hey, Google, can you make this map change? We allow them to make that, that change right here in the system on their own. Yeah, because right? things move around, it, particularly in retailers. They might move the men's clothing department down to an even a different floor. Yeah. By the way, can you, can you properly show multiple floors on this thing? Because oh, yeah. lots of buildings have, you know, I don't know. I've been in buildings with 100 floors, right? So, yeah. Um, can I walk from floor to floor and see that as well? Absolutely. Okay. So you can go upstairs, elevators, and so forth. The other cool thing is that you can go into the system and you can actually add right here your device. So one of the other things that we have besides this system that makes a pretty app or improves the app you have is we're the only company that has been certified by one of the major Wi-Fi vendors. So Cisco actually integrated our software into their latest version of their Wi-Fi hardware software. Yeah. And they just launched go, that in February. Go back to the map because that's really important, I think. Do you, do you track where the Wi-Fi hotspots are in a, in a space so, or, or other wireless devices? Because if you do know where the Wi-Fi spots are, you can do really accurate indoor positioning, right? Exactly. So what we do is, you know, about back in 2009, uh, Mayor Bloomberg gave us a lot of money together with Cisco and Accenture to build the first indoor GPS experience in the world. And it was on the iPhone. And it was at the American Museum of Natural History. And what we did was we tapped into the network, the actual Cisco Wi-Fi, triangulate three access points. And there's this device that hardly anybody knows about, but it's really important. It's called the Real-Time Location Server. Okay. And what it will do is it will grab all that data, and there's tons of location data. Imagine the cloud process and all that. Grabs all that data from the access points, and then sends it to our secure location engine, and then we process it and do something cool with it, like put a little glowing blue dot on an iPhone map, or be able to send a notification depending on where you're standing indoors. Oh, that's really cool. I, it, that's sort of where the advertisers are hot and bothered about these glasses. Now, Google says no advertising is allowed on here, but I think we're heading into a commerce-based world where we want to ask it questions. Where is the, where's the closest tequila bar, man? I'm yeah. in Vegas. I want to go drink it, right? Or, exactly. You know, where, where do I get a T-shirt? Where do I get, you know, I don't have any shirts. I need a shirt. Or where do I go and get a toothbrush, you know? Yeah. And that, all that stuff is going to be navigated right in your glass, right? Exactly. Um, it's an interesting world. There's a bunch of competitors in this space. I think Apple just bought one. Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi Slam. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you how do you see the space overall, and how do you guys fit in this? How, what's your differentiator, I guess? Right. So historically, most of the startups in the space, including bigger companies like Google Maps and Doors, only did the glowing blue dot that everybody wants. It's like GPS indoors. Only did it on Android. And it's because they all did everything at the device level. So it was like the accelerometer in the phone. If you'd move the phone, it could help position you. We were the only company that was taking a network Wi-Fi hardware-based approach. And the reason is, is that Apple historically doesn't, doesn't allow you to do the same things that Android does, right? Yeah. It's less open. Yeah. So you couldn't get the glowing blue dot on the map. So we were just receiving calls saying, we know you guys know how to do it. Can we use your SDKs and so forth? So that's kind of one differentiator is we can do it both iPhone and Android. Now, that might raise the question, what's Apple going to do with Wi-Fi Slam? Because they do an Android-based approach. We don't know. Um, we think that maybe if Wi-Fi Slam were to open up its data, we'd love to use that too. But today, our system is agnostic. It works across all the platforms, and we have this helpful to use software platform where you can control the look and feel of the app, which is really important to retailers and yeah. Venetians and, and so yeah. forth. Well, I think this product is really going to change the expectations that people have when they walk into a place. Right. And you're going to want to talk to it and just see a simple, you know, take a right, take a left, go straight, a little map maybe, yeah. you know, maybe a little picture. 
very simplistic UI because it's not a very uh, complex, it's not a very high resolution monitor. It's, it's sharp, but it's right. not high resolution. It's not like looking at your iPad, right? Right. But when right. you're going to Vegas, you're not carrying your iPad around. You know, you have one of these on maybe or a, a simple phone in front of you, right? Yeah. So we definitely think that's where the world's going. And so then we would have to basically integrate our system with, you know, Google's APIs for that. Yeah, yeah, everything here is SDK'd, so I can build new kinds of apps that would talk to this this map and pull it, it, pieces of data or, or paths, navigation paths out, right? Exactly, so like the Venetian, they didn't have an app, so they used our WYSIWYG editor here to build an app. It's as easy for you know an intern to use. And then Macy's, who already had an app, and other retailers, they say, we just want your SDKs for mapping in the blue dot on the map. I can actually show you a video of, of how the blue dot works if, if we can take a look at it. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you got, and how long is the video? It's just a couple seconds long. Yeah, let's let's see it. And pull it up. Are you going to pull it up here? Or, uh, pull it up. Okay. So you can see right here. There's the glowing blue dot. That's an iPhone, and it's right next to this restaurant called Fix in, within a hotel. Yep. And I'm standing right next to Fix. That's how good the proximity can get, right? So our differentiator is right, cool. we're the first people to do iPhone and Android glowing blue dot. And we can provide you a system to change the maps and the look and feel whenever you That's like. That's cool. Because, it, you know, as you walk by that fix, it, you know, fix could, if, per, particularly if you have glass, if you know I'm looking at fix, yeah. then all of a sudden it could put a, put a, a you know, a, a menu up or an offer. Hey, come in right now. You get two for one exactly. shots, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and this world of context you know, it's really going to change over the next five years because that, that fix is really going to know who I am as a customer. They're going to know that I like, you know, Scotch whiskey and that I like Skrillex music. And, yeah. you know, they're going to know a little bit about me and they're going to give me offers to impel me to come in that are very personalized and very contextual, right? Yeah. And, uh, wow. It's, well, you bring it's up well. a really great point in that's that this stuff is really hard to provide context around. So yeah. imagine you're a retailer. Not only will I need to know what your preferences are, Robert likes you know, this brand of shoes, and so we should send him offers about that, but you're also gonna need to be able to tie into the inventory management database, because the shoe might be out of stock. You're gonna need to know, has that shoe moved in the store? So that's another database. And so that's one issue around you know, providing context. The other issue is around detecting where you're standing. Yep. And that historically, indoors, has been a really hard thing to attack, and we're just now figuring it out as an industry. Yeah, it's, it's uh it's pretty crazy to think about all the iterative steps that are going to happen over the next five years. You know, companies like yours are going to get us a little, a, a big chunk of the way there, and then the, you're going to build on all sorts of services. Yeah. Like, if you know, um, if you know, I'm in Fix, which is a, a cocktail place. Now I can off, I can order cocktails and say, hey, can you deliver me a, a Manhattan? And they'll bring it right to you because they know where you are. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> you know, exactly. You're at table 14, right? And they'll have right. a map of their own and say, oh, there's a customer there who wants a, a cocktail. We'll go over and serve them, you know? Totally. The one big there's thing. Already, there's already apps in San Francisco that are starting to do this, you know? Order in, from in my, where I'm sitting and, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and there's apps like eBay now that'll bring you, if I need an Apple power supply, it'll bring it to me in an hour, right? right. Because it knows I'm here. Um, it doesn't quite know within 15 feet, but it knows, you know, enough. Yeah, yeah. And we're starting to see this new commerce-based world evolve into a new thing that we just didn't expect, right? Well, you know, one of the things I think we have to help consumer really get comfortable with is sharing their location, yeah. right? So we took great pains to build our system so that we would make it so that you could completely opt out of being able to share your location if you want. So if you go into a store and it has our system, you don't have to get the glowing blue dot. You don't have to share your location to get that. But if you want to receive coupons based on you know your 10th visit to that store and we automatically detect you, oh. you need to share your location, yeah. right? So we think increasingly people are going to get more comfortable with location-based services if they get something in return. Yep, that, absolutely. I think you're going to get a lot in return because if they know where you are and if you know where they are, you can yeah. do commerce. You can, you know, have that drink delivered to you, and that'll be a cool feature. You know, instead of having to go wait at the at the bar for in line at the bar. You yeah. Know? Um, how much does this cost? You know, how much if Rackspace wanted to put this into their mall? You know, how much does it cost to buy this or use it? Yeah. And what's the well, there's different pricing models depending on what kind of level of app you want, but let's just pretend that you wanted to do just this one building and you wanted to use our SDK. Yeah. Say you already had a Rackspace app. On the low end, it's like 
a license for our software is $12,000 per year okay. for the low end, for one location. Yeah. If you start to roll out to additional retail stores and so forth, it, the price goes up, you know, there's other variables. But at the low end, you could get in for about $12,000 per year. Okay. So at Macy's is $12,000? They're more than that because they, they had some extra stuff involved, okay. but they were definitely, the for one store was, was very affordable for them. Okay. Yeah. So it's not for uh, putting it into your house yet. It, it still is, uh, you know, even Rackspace wouldn't do it for this office. We might think about it for our headquarters because uh, getting around our headquarters, we have a 1.1 million square foot mall where our yeah. headquarters is. We have 4,000 employees there. Getting around and finding a conference room is a pain in the butt. Totally. <laughs> and we've already built some apps to help you move around, but this would take it to the next level, right? Totally. So Intel, corporate campus, they yeah. used our software to make an app just like that. Okay. So they built an app and you can search for a conference room and see if it's available and then be able to book it right from your phone. Yeah. Right. So we're not going to see a lot of these indoor maps quickly for a lot of other space, like airports, they might go, oh, we don't want to pay that. Um, you know, it'll, be, it'll happen in retail first and malls, that kind of thing. You um, know where it's really happening that no one even knows is hospitals. So hospitals have huge wayfinding problems because the buildings were built over say 100 years. You'd have one yeah. building that was 1901, another one was 2010, juxtaposed. And so you're trying to go up different stairs to get there. Then they have governmental regulations around helping people find where they're going if they speak different languages. So yeah. mobile is perfect for that because it can automatically detect what language you speak based on your settings and provide you that to help them to be able to achieve those government regulations. Um, the other thing is that they have healthcare in the U.S. has lots of money, yeah. right? And so they experiment on this kind of stuff. Yeah. So most of yeah, our customers can, are actually hospitals. If they can find efficiencies, they can save a lot of money. Right. You know, and if they if they can use it for studying, how long does it take? Uh, patient to go from here to here with a team of doctors you know if you're being rushed from one at the surgery room to the next can we make efficiencies that'll save money right can we get people to to arrive on their their appointments on time uh, so. instead of pushing the points out right that can yeah. save costs so we have about 10 hospital conglomerates that use our system the next is retail obviously yeah. everybody gets that one um, hospitality hotels yeah. but we have four airports right now that we're working with so we think airports corporate campuses that's the Cinderella story I think of this year is that You've got Intel and you've got other corporate campuses where their employees work from home, yeah. except for Yahoo. They work from home and then they might come in and they don't know where they're going. You know, they might need to find some type of conference room or maybe it's a water fountain or an ATM yeah. and so forth. But you can see it's uh, it's a decade before an entire city is going to be indoor mapped like this. You know, it's yeah. going to be a while, but it's coming. And it sounds like you guys have a decade of work ahead of you. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Congrats on that, and uh, Thank it'll you. be interesting to watch this space. It's really Thank interesting. Um, so yeah, let me show you real quick oh, yeah. uh, the what simulator, just so you can see how you might build an app. Um, oh yeah, let me see how, how you could build an app here. Okay, let's see here. So you built your app, and you know this is the Venetian app, and so they can actually just within seconds change out the look and feel. So they have different promotions going all the time, yeah. and they are able to change that out. But let's say that we want to find out more about um, you know restaurants and so forth, and so I'm pulling from the simulator, so it's going to be a bit, little bit slow pulling up. So I can say, okay, I want to look at all the restaurants that are there, yeah. right? And maybe I want to look at this one right here, learn more about it, see a photo, maybe see a menu. We can pull from a database of the menus. You can be able to pull from a database of whether you can uh, book from here. Yeah. And then you hit directions to here. Now, because I'm not there, I need to tell the system where I'm starting from, yeah. which is also important for places that don't have sophisticated Wi-Fi. Yeah. So it's just putting me on the map. And you can see here, it's a pretty map. You can see the detail of the water there on the map. You can scroll in and out if you like. Now that's what you would want in the Google Glass, and that that one piece of it would map to the glass really well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just and tell me where to go. Tell me to take a right at the at the fountain. Mm -hmm. you know, take take a left at the McDonald's. You know. And yeah. Show me a picture of what I'm supposed to be seeing when I'm walking through this place. Yeah. Exactly. And we just pull that <laughs> data in. Now the cool thing also is that it basically slices and dices the directions. Yep. And you would think that everybody in the industry would be doing this, but they're not. Most of our competitors are just providing this static map and it just has like a little route drawn. And we believe that you need to kind of guide the person by their hand yep. all the way there, right? So that's one way that you can do it. Um, another way you can interact is Very to smart. actually tap on the map itself. And so like Macy's, they said, you know what? We believe our customers will go straight to the map button and yep. they'll interact with the low, you know, these little icons. So this might be a department of a retail store. Here it's a, it's a bar, and I want to get more details about it, I can do that, or I can just hit directions. Now if I was there, the system would automatically detect me and put a glowing blue dot on my map. So if I was lost, I could just know exactly where I am. 
Uh, this is a crazy world, and I, I can see how that'll map to this uh, always on world and get me around places. And yeah, I, you, know, you know, if I was Macy's or if I was a, a mall, I would also urge my uh, uh, restaurants to all get open table or something like it. Yeah, so I could get you know reservations right from the glass and have a table all waiting for me when I get there. Exactly. You know, certainly at, in Vegas, where they have these multi-million dollar restaurants, uh, that's going to be pretty quick, I think. You know? Well, also imagine two, like two, three years. What about loyalty programs? So today, yeah. like Shopkick, you actually have to, say you're a mother and you got two kids in tow. With Shopkick, you have to fire up the app with yeah. them screaming and then get your little coupon. With Wi-Fi fencing, you just detect the person if they've opted in. So I don't even have to pull open the app. It will wake up the app every time I walk in the store. And so you'd be able to get all kinds of benefits by visiting the place more often. Now, and this is where Amazon, Android is still ahead of uh, iOS because the Wi-Fi radios can do all sorts of stuff like wake up apps right. where Apple really is locked down. I hope Apple opens up, but uh, you know, we'll see. So we've actually found out a way to wake up the app. Oh, so, <laughs> don't tell Apple, he might yeah. take you off. <laughs> <laughs> we can wake up an app without it, without it been running. So wow. when, when you walk inside a venue, we can actually wake it up and, and send oh, you smart. a greeting message. Can you, can you take me to a web page, a web app? Because a lot of people won't have the Bellagio app loaded on their device. Right. But if I walk into the Bellagio, if it can take me to the Bellagio mapping system on the web, uh, boom. We can't have, do that. Uh, yeah. Okay. But it, you have to have the app of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wake well, up. that's yeah. that's cool. You just get, a, get them to get the app. Uh, where do we learn more about you guys? So if you go to www.meridianapps.com, you learn more about us. And how, just uh, real briefly, lastly, how are you guys funded? And tell me about your company a little bit. So we have about uh, 12 employees. Uh, we have $1 million of funding. We took it back in November 2011. We're making quite a bit of money already where we didn't have to spend all the funding. Uh, we have 50 brands that are paying us to license our software platform to make apps or improve ones they have. Um, we have partnerships with Cisco, so we were the first, they looked at all the startups in the space, they have 70% of the Wi-Fi market share, yep. and they chose our software to integrate with their Wi-Fi hardware, so you can use it through them. And then we have a partnership with Qualcomm, and Qualcomm is doing some really cool stuff at the chip uh, level. Uh, right? They're the ones to watch. Uh, they're not in the glass, the, the glass has TI chipsets, but all this, a lot of the Android-based smartphones are uh, um, Qualcomm chipsets, and they're already building contextual APIs. They have a contextual SDK called Gimbal that I've done a video on, and it's right. pretty cool stuff. You should check out their Is That platform. So they invited us over to uh, Mobile World Congress a couple years ago, and we went to the Museum of Contemporary Art of Barcelona. And we walked around with these Qualcomm-powered devices where it would actually show you with our system the artwork that you were standing next to. Wow. And then you walk next to another one, and the artwork would pop up. Now imagine if that was the experience in a retailer, in a hotel, and so forth. Very cool. It's a great future coming at us. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Thanks a lot for having me, Robert. Hey, really thank you so much. It. Yeah.